Whether you're in business, trying to attract someone you like, or just trying to make new friends, we all live in a world where first impressions and social intelligence matters. So today, I'm going to cover one of my favorite books, How to Talk to Anyone by Leo Laundes. There's 92 little tricks in here, but I'm just going to cover the first 31. But if this video reaches 200 likes, I'll make a part 2. So let's begin. The first technique is to make sure you don't flash an immediate smile whenever you greet someone. Instead, look at the person for a good second or two. Pause, soak in their persona, and then let a big, warm, responsive smile flood over your face and overflow in your eyes. Think of how a good comedian will build up to a punchline for a joke. Next, pretend your eyes are glued to your conversation partner. Don't break eye contact even if he or she has finished speaking. If you have to look away, do it slowly. But as a side note, Lil warns the men to lower the intensity level when using this on other men. Now in a group setting, watch your target partner even when someone else is talking. If this is too intense, then keep your eyes on the speaker, but every time the speaker finishes a point, let your glance bounce to your target. This technique makes your target feel like you care about his or her reaction. Next is about posture. Every time you walk through a doorway, picture an iron jaw bit hanging from the frame just slightly above your head and imagine taking a bite out of it. This should help you straighten your posture. Practice this in your home throughout the day. For the next technique, consider giving a warm smile, your full attention, and the total body turn to everyone you meet, as if a cute baby just crawled up to your feet. Or similarly, imagine the person is like your old best friend who you haven't seen in ages. Number 7 is about not fidgeting and keeping hand motions below your head. Many believe that one of the big reasons that Richard Nixon lost to JF Kennedy in the 1960 presidential elections is because he kept fidgeting and mopping his eyebrows on live television. Technique 8 is about making it a habit to pay attention to the little things. Are they smiling? Looking away? Rubbing their neck? Is their feet pointing towards the door? You don't have to be a body language expert to pick up on what they may be thinking. Next, relax and practice visualizing yourself walking around hung by your teeth, shaking hands, smiling and treating people like you're meeting a long lost best friend. Next, remember to match people's mood and tone of voice first, even if they're upset or depressed. Enter people's world before bringing them to yours. The eleventh is understanding that your first impression has little to do with your actual words. Just remember to avoid starting conversations with a complaint or something negative. The next technique is to wear or carry something unusual, could be small, that strangers will feel compelled to stop you and ask you, what is that? Next, ask a friend, the host of the party, or anyone who knows your target about some facts, and then use those as an icebreaker. So I heard you're a famous magician where you're from. But if you don't know anyone who can give you some facts, then try eavesdropping. Excuse me, I couldn't help but overhear that you're a dancer. When someone asks you the inevitable, where are you from? Or what do you do? Never give one word answers and try to have it relate to the person you're talking to. Research some interesting facts on the internet. I'm an attorney from Toronto, a city with over 8,000 restaurants. Right now, I'm involved in a case where a company actually discharged a woman for taking extra maternity leave that was a medical necessity. Now the same rules apply when you're introducing people to one another. Just remember if you're uncomfortable mentioning someone's job, then mention their hobby or some accomplishment. Next, when in conversation, pay attention to word clues that hint to your target's preferred topic. Then when possible, start talking about that topic. Some people might seem shy, quiet, or bored, but talk about a topic they like and they might not shut up. The next one was inspired by Brian Tracy. He says to picture a spotlight. In sales, if the spotlight is focusing on the product, it's not interesting to the prospect. But if the spotlight is focused on the prospect, they make the sale. So when it comes to people, let the conversation and spotlight be mainly focused on them. 
The next technique can help you never be left speechless again by simply repeating the last few words your conversation partner says and turning it into a question. This puts the ball back on their court. Guess what? I just started playing Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go? The word encore which the audience sometimes shouts at the end of a good performance means they want another one. So recall a good story someone in a group setting with you has told you, and then tell the group, tell them about the time you got struck by lightning and survived. This shines the spotlight on them by requesting a repeat performance. When first meeting someone, avoid any stories about yourself that would potentially be looked down upon. Later in the relationship, telling a new friend that you got caught stealing or have been married three times will probably be no big deal. Next, if you're ever afraid of going to some social event because you'll have nothing to say, then simply go watch or read about the latest news. The 24th is about never asking people the question, what do you do? Some people are just not proud of what they do for a living like a tax collector. Instead ask, how do you spend most of your time? If they're workaholics, they'll happily tell you what they do anyways. But if someone asks you what you do, ask yourself how your profession can help this person's life. For example, don't just say you're a real estate agent, say, I help people moving into our area find the right home. Next get a thesaurus. Look up common words that you use every day and start finding permanent replacements. For example, many women have been called pretty, beautiful, cute, or hot enough times in their lives. Stand out and say something like, Don't take this the wrong way, but you look ravishing. Next is killing the quick me too. Oftentimes, when we find something in common with someone, we often want to immediately say, Me too! But Leo says to let the person keep talking and just keep asking questions while hinting you're knowledgeable about the topic for a while. When you finally do tell them, they might be shocked. Then you just flatter them by saying something like, I was just enjoying hearing you talk. I was afraid you'd stop me if I told you. This creates a much bigger impact. As much as possible, incorporate the word you in your sentences. Instead of asking, where's the closest restaurant? Ask, can you tell me where's the closest restaurant? Interestingly, Therapists calculate that inmates of mental institutions say I and me 12 times more than residents of the outside world. Next, don't flash everyone with the same smile. When meeting groups of people, give a distinct smile to each person. And if one person in the group is more important to you than others, then reserve an especially big, special smile, perhaps using the one from technique number one. Next, never use cliches of any kind like, I'm as quiet as a mouse. Instead, follow technique number 31 and consider just slightly changing the ones you already know. For example, switch when pigs fly to when monkeys live on clouds, or as quiet as a mouse to as quiet as an eel swimming in oil. Instead of sure as death and taxes, try as certain as beach traffic in July. 